It's time to unlock the true potential of my NAS. Previously on the channel, if you've been keeping up with my videos, you might have noticed that I did a ITX build. I was rebuilding my gaming PC because I used to use my gaming PC as both a gaming PC and a NAS, but now I have a dedicated NAS. So I was able to shrink down my gaming PC, make it nice and convenient so it could go on my desk, and, and it was great. But it got me thinking, maybe I've gone about this the wrong way. Maybe I should be gaming on my NAS. And I don't mean just hosting a, a server or uh, having the game files on it. No, I mean actually running games on my NAS. This idea came to me because I was looking at what this NAS can actually do and it's getting long in the tooth now. The software that it has built in it is quite restrictive. There's certain things that I want to be able to do that aren't easily done. So I wanted to see what other operating systems I could install on it. And when I was kind of actually having a look around, I realized that one particular thing about this NAS that kind of makes it a bit special, it does in fact have an HDMI port. So it can video out. So can I install Windows on it? It has an Intel CPU. It's a Celeron J1900, which as we know, Celerons are known for their gaming performance. So I wanna see if I can get Windows installed on this. I wanna see if we can game on it. But first I thought, let's actually tear this down and take a look at the inside and see how much of an actual computer it, it actually is. So let's get the drives out of this and let's start tearing it down. All right, this should be a pretty decent angle. Um, as you can say, there are four drive bays on here. So we can start by just pulling these out. They are kind of hot swappable. We have an SSD where I sort of installed all the apps and then three disks that are actually using this NAS storage. And then having taken those out, if we look around the back here, we can see that there are a couple of screws on the actual case itself. So let's get those off. You can also have a little bit closer look at the IO on this thing. So we have dual ethernet, HDMI out, two USB 2 ports, a USB 3 port, and there's another USB 3 port around the front. Well, let's get these off. And then with those off, this should just slide and then comes off. And so the plastic enclosure completely comes away and you can already kind of start to see that there is a dusty computer in there, but there is definitely a computer in there. We've got this hard drive enclosure and the back here is kind of the breakout SATA board. So let's just get this enclosure unscrewed and removed as well. With those gone, this should just kind of lift off. And there we go. And as you can see on the actual board is a PCIe slot, which kind of then becomes a breakout board with the, it's going to focus, with the four SATA ports for the four hard drive bays. So we'll pop that to the side as well. And then we can actually have a look at the computer itself. We have this big old fan at the back that blows air through the whole device. But more importantly, we do have um, the CPU itself with this very minuscule cooler, bit concerned about that. Doesn't scream gaming CPU cooler, but we'll try. And we have two RAM slots that take laptop RAM and uh, there is eight gigs installed in here, two four gig DDR3L sticks. And you can kind of see what looks very much like almost maybe a laptop motherboard. We have the CMOS battery, we have our, P our single PCIe slot. Then we have this here, which is basically, this is the ROM. This is where the device stores its operating system. Uh, it then extracts that into RAM, and then you have to install apps and stuff to a drive that you plug in. But this is actually plugged into a USB header. So it's very slow and it's basically that is where it stores kind of the details that you need. 
And that's about it, really. There isn't a whole lot else in here to speak of, but I reckon there's some serious gaming performance to be had here. Interestingly enough, I've just spotted that there's two SATA kind of header spaces, and they're labeled SATA 1 and SATA 2. I wonder if this board is used for maybe a bigger NAS or something else, but uh, uh, there's definitely places on the motherboard that are missing components. Anyway, that is essentially the NAS. It really is just a very efficient, basic PC designed for one very specific task. And we're about to change that and, and see how well it can game instead. Okay, let's get this all put back together, and then we are going to try and boot Windows on it. So we're now all set up, ready to do some gaming. I've got my Razer gaming keyboard, which is covered in paint, but that's a whole other problem. My Razer gaming mouse. I've got both plugged into the NAS at the back, and then I've got my ultra wide monitor plugged in as well. And then in one of the enclosures, I've actually got a M.2 SATA drive, an old drive that I had laying around, which I've then put into an enclosure to convert it back to a normal SATA. So at least it should be a little bit faster than kind of hard drive spinning disk speeds. So let's, this has got Windows already installed on it along with Steam and a couple of games. So let's see if this works. So we're gonna plug it in to the first drive slot. And then we're gonna boot it up, get into the BIOS and see if we can boot to that disc. So here's my ultra wide gaming monitor. Let's turn on the NAS and see if we can get into the BIOS. I have also plugged in a USB Wi-Fi dongle just to give us internet connection because I don't have ethernet in uh, this room. So we'll give it a go and see what how it goes. Let's see if we can get into the setup. I mean, we're seeing the BIOS, which is a good start. Is the keyboard connected, it lit up. So that's a good start too. There we go, we are entering the BIOS. And here we go, here is our BIOS. Uh, yeah, I mean, pretty standard looking BIOS really. We have all the normal sort of stuff that you might expect from a very basic computer. Uh, and here we go, so you'll see that we have this USB disk module, and that is what we would normally boot to, but we're gonna disable that, and we're gonna boot to our Windows boot manager that is on that drive. So let's see if this boots. And there we go, straight away it is uh, booting. That's a good sign at least. and through to the Windows login screen. Look at that. Now that is surprising. And there we go, <laughs> Windows, it just worked. We have Windows running on the NAS and we can take a look and have a look at the task manager and we can see that, yep, we have our Celeron, J1, I think I said 1700 before, but it's 1900. So even better with a base clock speed of 1.99 gigahertz, four cores. Oh, yes, this is a gaming beast. Eight gigabytes of RAM recognized. Um, we've actually got this is the, that USB disk module that is being recognized as well. We've got our SSD, and I've connected up some Wi Fi as well. So there we go, we have Windows running on this thing. It's not the snappiest, as you can kind of tell. Things just take a minute to load. It's always great when the task manager takes that long to move. Uh, we also do seem to be kind of pretty bottlenecked. All oh, that's some window lag. It's trying to catch it. Oh. So we're pretty heavily kind of locked on the processors. The task manager itself was is using at 20% there for a second. Yeah, this is gonna be an interesting experience, but let's get into it. Uh it's also a little bit stretched. I'm guessing this is running at 1080p. Yes. So we just have 1080p. It's not recognizing the fact that this is a ultra widescreen monitor. I wasn't really expecting it to, let's be honest. I think this is as many pixels as we're gonna get. I'm also pretty sure it's not gonna be able to push this many pixels in game. So I'm not too worried about that. 
so let's let's try let's try some games. I'm going to start, you know, with a game that I've loved for a very long time, and I think more and more people are loving again. That's Fallout Four. Let's see if we can get Fallout Four running on this at all, and uh, enter the wasteland. It's detected our video settings and set them to low quality. I'm not surprised by that at all. But let's just check what we've got. So it has. It is going to try and do it at full HD, uh, but with all the details turned down to low. So let's give it a go. Let's see what happens. Oh, <laughs> so it can't detect the sound. No sound device. Fallout 4 cannot run without sound. That seems strange to me. Um, let's see if we can fix that because we should definitely have sound over HDMI. One week later. So rather annoyingly, after some time playing around with Windows, I still cannot get the audio device to work. Uh, it just will not recognize it as an audio output, which is very strange. My my Windows skills are not up to par to figuring it out. As far as Intel's concerned, this is supposed to be packaged with the display drivers. Display drivers are installed, but who knows? So there's going to be no Fallout for us. I also think that's a very weird thing from Fallout side that you can't play the game without audio. But such is life. We'll move on. Let's try something that's probably going to be a bit more possible anyway. Let's give Half-Life 2 a try. We are actually doing some gaming on the NAS. Look at this. So we're getting, okay, 30-ish frames per second. This is with everything turned on high at full HD. Of course, it is a bit stretched and looking a bit weird. Um, you know, it's dipping. It's, it's not locked at a higher rate. Uh, let's see what happens when we're kind of around these people. But you know what? It's working though. We hit 40 frames per second there. This, we're gaming on an ass. <laughs> this is kind of cool. Uh, I must admit, I'm I'm impressed that this is working at all. Okay, it's not the best, but it's working. Uh, and I am impressed by that. Of course, we've got no audio because the audio is not working, but yeah, you know. So let's see, let's try, you know, something a little bit more demanding that will hopefully still run. Let's let's see if we can do some uh, eSports. Counter-Strike is kind of running. This is really not a good sign. Uh, let's see if we can get into the settings. And hopefully adjust things a little bit. Okay, maybe we can let's let's be a little more optimistic and bring us down to 720p. I'm really not sure what's going on here, but it is not having a good time. The the NAS itself is also absolute screaming that fan is going full time look i'll uh, put my mic near it so you can hear it it's going very well for us okay let's try running it one more time suffice to say uh, that didn't happen either and just also froze up so can we game on a NAS? Well, yeah, kind of, if you're only interested in playing games from 20 years ago. But should you game on a NAS? No. This is, considering these, when new, go for four, five hundred pounds, it is a very expensive way to have a very bad time at trying to game. Clearly, it's hardware that's specialized for a very specific purpose. But... What this video has taught me, uh, which is much more interesting, is the fact that you can easily install other operating systems on this, or at least boot from a drive with another operating system on. So I'm going to start looking at how I can get rid of the laggy, slow operating system that comes with the device and install something much more useful. There are loads of open source Linux-based NAS operating systems out there. 
So I'm going to take a look at those and find something that works for my needs. And if that's a video that you'd be interested in, please do comment down below. Uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a more practical use for being able to boot to a different OS. Still, I've had a lot of fun trying this, and it's kind of interesting to me that you can even get as far as we did. Uh, but thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, if you have, please do hit that like button and subscribe. We're still a very small channel on our way to a thousand subscribers. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.